Hey guys, today I'm gonna to walk you through step-by-step -step of editing an interior photo. This is a glimpse of what the final image should look like. It was shot for uh, one of my clients that I'm on contract with, Ardo Brick. They made this uh, tile backsplash here, so that was the focus of the image. Let's get started. All right, this is my workflow, and this is how I do things. Uh, Drep Raw, or I'm sorry, Adobe Bridge. Uh, I don't use Lightroom, I use Bridge in Photoshop. Flip through the photos, find the ones I want to edit. There we go, I'm gonna give a command one on these two images, that gives it a one star. I know I'm gonna be editing those. I'll select these two photos and pull them into Photoshop. From here, I'll select both of them, command A, uh, and then use my soft interiors, kind of stock setting as I call it, my starting point here. Uh, what this does, you can see over here on the side, bumps up the contrast by five, highlights down 75, shadows up 75, whites up 15, blacks up five, a little bit of clarity, and then of course uh, a little bit of sharpening at 85, masking and luminance at 50, uh, and then the uh, remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. So that's my starting point. I start there with most of my interior photos. Uh, oops, these already had some lines on them from before. I'll clear that out. Um, then I'll go to the uh, transform tool up here and I will draw some lines to straighten out all the verticals and horizontals on the image. So I'll trace these nice crisp lines that I've given myself. Um, I know the top of the cabinets should be level and so should the bottom cabinet. So as I go through this, I'm going to try to make it look great, but it might not be perfect because I want to keep this tutorial relatively short and easy to get through. Uh, let's talk about color balance. Um, first of all, this top image is all ambient. Uh, this bottom image is where I've got a flash on the interior there of the kitchen. Um, the color balance is a different temperature here inside the kitchen and out here. Uh, so there's many ways you can go about combating this. And here's the way that I'm going to do on this photo. I'm going to click done for now, go back to bridge, and I'm actually going to make a copy, command C, command V, of this image. So I'm going to use two images, and what I'll do is uh, set the color balance different for each image, and then I will combine those two in Photoshop. So here's the copy. Uh, I'm going to use the color sample tool somewhere out here and pick this color. So I'm just looking at this kind of left half of the screen for the color balance over here, uh, picking a spot. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, for the other ambient interior, uh, I'm gonna pick a spot somewhere else. Uh, maybe let's see on the windowsill. That makes it too warm. Maybe I'll zoom in to this little section uh, in the white grout here. Uh, maybe I'll pick a spot here. Whoop, that's way too warm. Um, kind of play around and see what looks good. Somewhere in between that, so let's bump that up a little bit, give it a little more warmth. All right, and for the sake of this tutorial, I'll leave it there. Uh, also, it's gonna be combined with this flash shot, so keep that in mind as well. Um, for the flash shot, I'm gonna bring the contrast down a little bit to get rid of some of these more heavy shadows. Uh, and that looks pretty good as far as where I'm gonna start. Um, let's see. Yep, here we go. All right, so now I'll take all three of these and layers, but that will give me a title of the image as untitled one, and I like to have the image name or the file name as part of my title. Uh, so I'm gonna just do it this way and copy and paste. And again, this is my workflow, it works for me. Uh, there's many ways to do it, and that's why I make this tutorial, is to show you one example of how another person does something. So I'm just copying and pasting all these layers uh, I can go ahead and close these. Now, we've got the flash layer. I'll go ahead and name them for us. Flash. And this is the foreground color and the background. All right, so for the foreground and background to mix them together, uh, I will select my uh, marquee tool here. I'm gonna feather it, let's say, three pixels and then I'm simply gonna select this left half of the screen, gonna throw on the layer mask, whoops, throw on the layer mask on there, and now uh, I've got the combination. So 
the color balance is a little bit more even here. Again, it might not be absolutely perfect, but I'm trying to make this relatively quick. Uh, so flash layer, I will uh, actually put that right here on top of the background. I'm gonna hit F5 and it's gonna do a bunch of work for me. Uh, you can go to Nathan Cool's photo uh, tutorial YouTube page and see how he does his fast flambient action set. That's where I got that little trick from. It works really well as a starting point for blending the flash and ambient layers. Uh, I'll move that back to the top. Now I'm going to just remove everything from the foreground here on that flash layer. Cool. So now I've got my kind of flash ambient blend layer in the back. Uh, actually, that was uh, I'm undoing that because I see if you zoom in here, I've got this kind of line that appeared. Uh, so let's try to get rid of that a little bit. Undo, undo. Let's move my marquee over a little bit. Undo, move it over, move it over. How's that look? All right, we're getting there. Um, I don't love that line right here, but again, uh, I'm gonna try to make this quick and not nitpick everything as I'm going along. All right, so I've got my layers all combined. Now at this point, I will save my process in a process folder, I'll just save the Photoshop file. I like to keep all my Photoshop files uh, in case I ever need to go back and do anything different with them. Uh, next up, I'm going to start on my fixes. So I'm gonna type a layer called fixes. All right, for the fixes, I'm going to basically go around the screen, zooming in with the zoom tool and fixing things that are eyesores or distractions. So I'm gonna use uh, what I call the J tool. It's the spot healing tool over here. You click the letter J and it gets it. And just brush away anything that distracts my eye from the main focus of the image. Um, I've done this image a couple of times, so I kind of know where the distractions are. And immediately I come to this big, ugly elephant in the room uh, we're going to tackle this later. Essentially, I'm an idiot. I left my phone on the table here and I accidentally left the designer's business cards on the table. But we'll go back and take care of that a little bit later because it's pretty involved. So right now I'm just going to go all the way around the room, removing little imperfections and things, removing anything that could take your eye away from the, uh, the focus here of the image. Uh, this Turkish towel has a little bit of extra stuff hanging down. I want to get rid of that. That looks pretty good. This bowl has some blemishes there. Uh, and even though this tile is supposed to be imperfect, uh, you know, a couple of little white spots might draw your eye like directly to that spot because the eye is naturally drawn to white areas. Um, as I'm zooming in too, I notice that we've got a couple of reflections here from the flash. So I'm gonna go to my flash layer and take my eraser tool and brush that out. Let's see if I can get rid of some of these too, yep. Get rid of some of that. Again, use that J tool. I'm gonna to get rid of this ugly tree. It doesn't add anything to the background, it's dead. It's got no value, it's a distraction. <clears throat> the windows are a little bit dirty, but I'm not gonna to try to tackle that right now. But what I will do in just a minute, <coughs> excuse me, is actually make this window a little bit wider. Um, let's see, I've got a light switch over here that I don't like. That takes away from the tile, of course. I'm gonna feather the marquee tool by one pixel, make a selection here, get the clone stamp tool, let's uh, click in the letter S, and we will clone out this light switch. Just like that. Pretty easy fix there. Uh, deselect that. What else do we have? Uh, I see a big shadow up here, so I'm gonna go back to the flash layer and get the eraser tool and brush that out. That's because the flash was inside the kitchen pointing up at the ceiling over to the left side of the frame. Um, let's see. All right. Um, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to white out the window. So I'm going to make a new window or a new, new layer rather and I'm going to use the pen tool. Uh, pen tool is really good for a lot of things if you know how to use it well. Uh, luckily I've got a background in graphic design and I'm pretty proficient uh, and can use a pen tool quickly. And actually we don't even have to be that precise around this faucet because we're just doing a white layer. So I can actually go really quick around here because there's actually white already around the faucet. Make a selection of that, we'll feather it at one 
and then I'm going to fill that with my background color, which is white. Uh, that's obviously too much, but if I set the opacity to, let's say, 60%, then that looks pretty good. So you can see when I turn on and off, I've got this uh, white window. And that looks like a pretty good job for our main fixes. Alright, first things first, uh, let's get rid of the title of the book. I'm going to do a little Easter egg, as I call it, and hide something kind of fun in here. And I'm going to actually change the name of the book uh, to something that has to do with the company that I shot this for. So I'm just kind of erasing some of this stuff to start. And then I'm going to uh, get rid of the... Uh, the business cards over here. So I'm just using my selection tool and making a kind of general selection so that I don't paint out anything that I want to leave alone. Um, all right, we'll start with there. So now I've got the clone stamp tool and I'll start cloning out this section here. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. It might not be absolutely perfect by the end of it, uh, but I don't want to bore you guys. I just want to show you uh, techniques that I use to get things done. Uh, pretty much the main reason why I want to show you these techniques is because I've learned a lot from people from watching their YouTube videos, and I kind of want to just give back and help other people out the way that people have helped me out over the years. All right, I'm gonna deselect this part of the book that's kind of done and get that clone stamp tool, take out my phone. I was listening to some music there and had that on as like my little speaker. I can't believe I left that there for this shot. Um, this shot was the last one that I shot during this shoot. Uh, that's probably why I forgot it. So now I've got the eyedropper tool and I'm going to use the brush tool. Uh, select the color with the eyedropper and then take a brush and kind of just paint out some stuff. Um, you can see that there's kind of like a reflection on this table from the book. So uh, I need to take that into account and make it look kind of natural. Make that little shadow underneath it a little bit darker. Um, and we're looking pretty good actually. We've got a little bit more of the reflection down here from the title of the book that was there. Um, cool, so that looks pretty good. If you zoom out, uh, I can take this layer on and off and see the difference. Now, title of the book. I'm gonna do something a little fun here. Um, book fix, that's what we're gonna call this layer here. All right, so I'm going to get the color of this title of the book and I'm gonna get my text type tool and I'm going to make a new title and it's going to be called how to make great tile because again this was for a tile company and I've already got a nice condensed font I kind of set that up ahead of time uh, and I'm going to fill this uh, with that kind of gold color to make it do about how long the title is Uh, then I'm going to hold option and click and drag to make the author, which is Ardo. That's the name of the company that the photo is shot for. Uh, I'll shrink that down a little bit and kind of mimic how this book was done. Uh, and turn back on the book fix layer. The little line here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to undo that not feathered at all, no feathering on this. I'm gonna make a crisp line because my text is crisp and I'll show you how we fix that in just a second. All right, so now we have a book title, a little line, that line might be a little wide, but I'll leave it there for now. Or if I want to decrease the width of that line, I can zoom in and use my, there we go. All right, now <clears throat> I've got my three layers, My uh, book title layers and I'll just put command G to group those together and then I'll kind of center this uh, and now just in case I ever need to go back and change anything I'm gonna leave that group 
uh, make a copy of it option or command E and uh, put that all together. Turn this other layer off. And now this is book title blurry. It's not blurry yet. Yeah, I know. I'm about to do that. Uh, I'm going to go to my blur gallery, the Gaussian. I think that's how you call it, blur. Now we're going to try to match this blur with the amount of blur in the photo just so it kind of uh, makes sense. So about two, that looks good. Perfect. So now if we zoom out, we've got a nice little Easter egg hidden in that image, how to make great tile by Ardo. Cool. Um, but I will say, again, I wanted this more out um, habit. Maybe I just was tired and was into the shoot. I wasn't thinking very clearly. Whatever the case, this half of the photo, I want to be less in focus so your eye is drawn more to the back half of the photo. How are we going to do that? Great question. I'm selecting all my layers, copying them, Option G, or Command G, sorry. Make them into a group. Uh, Command E, put that group into a flat layer. And I'm going to make the foreground blurry. So name that. I'm going to go back to the Gaussian blur. And let's see how blurry I want it. Um, so let's bump it up to, I don't know, 8.5. Let's start there. Um, now, I'm going to take the marquee tool, give myself a little bit of feather at three pixels, select this half of the photo, and throw on that uh, layer mask once again. Now you can see the foreground is out of focus, the background is in focus, and that draws your eye to the back of the image a little bit more. Uh, so, at this point I'm going to save again just to make sure I don't lose any of my work. Uh, I'm going to call it quits there for now. Um, and what I do for my process, again, is I'll go into my folders. I've always got this set up. Uh, I'm going to save this as a full res JPEG. This is kind of the end of my workflow here, just uh, showing you how I organize my images. We're going to close that out. Uh, and now in my folder, so this is called demo because for this demo uh, video, but in here I always have my raw, my process where my PSDs are, my print, which I just saved my final JPEG, and then a web. I always save in two different uh, formats, A to deliver to clients, B for me later, just so I don't have to, uh, you know, resave it later when I'm ready for it. Uh, so let's take a look and see if I got my image to look pretty similar to the original one that I edited. Um, here's the original, and here's the one I just edited a few seconds ago. So pretty similar. Uh, there's a couple of things that, you know, could be changed, could be a little more perfect, whatever, but again, for the sake of this demo, uh, it's pretty good. So uh, to get this web res, I'm going to do command R to open the JPEG in the camera raw filter. Click save image down at the bottom left. Uh, I have a preset for web that is saved at quality 10 and then 70 which folder that goes into. And then bam, I'm done. Click done. And that, my friends, is my workflow on editing an interior photo. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. 